good day to the viewers of Swachh TV. Today we have Dr. Neeraj Roy. Neeraj Roy from Lucknow. He is uh, the scientist, Birbal Sayani Institute uh, for uh, of value uh, sciences. So today uh, a, a workshop is being conducted here in S R N B G N R College uh, about uh, archaeogenetics. So to attend this uh, uh, workshop, he came here, and uh, it is a very uh, a good opportunity for us to meet him and uh, ask about uh, some doubts regarding his subject. Sir, good day, sir. Today. Good day. Uh, to so thank you. Uh, working as a scientist in uh, paleontology. So paleo sciences means uh, it is about the fossils, I think. So how can you connect? These fossils uh, with the latest uh, uh, DNA experiments and all that. <clears throat> Very good question. Actually, paleo sciences uh, deal with all the uh, studies related to past. So, how deep in past that depends upon the subject. So, in terms of human evolution and human studies. our deep past is not like uh, what we are working in aspect of uh, um, like uh, other vertebrates like uh, jurassic park so our uh, history is not that old you know that all the modern humans were evolved all together in africa and then they diversified about 70000 years before present and uh, about 60000 years before present all the modern humanity has came to india homo sapiens Ye yes so all were homo sapiens so the our history is not that old in terms of uh, this evolutionary scale so evolutionary scale is very uh, big and uh, you know like life originated about 3.2 billion years before present and all the humans we are descendant of one common ancestors and uh, those who lived around 1 lakh years before present so we are like not very old uh, compared to other species our life journey is very short and uh, we evolved all together and all the humanity spread all across the world in a very recent past so uh, <coughs> for the duration of human kind hmm. so how much it will, it would be sorry uh, how much uh, the duration of the yeah. human beings so uh, if you go back to 70 80000 years before present um humans were only present in africa okay all across the world humans were not here so but yeah. but we had hominids human like species humanoids yeah humanoids okay so human like species they were everywhere on this planet but not modern humans mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> about 80000 years before present different wave of migration happened and earliest modern human started moving out of africa because of many reasons because one reason is drought other reason is uh, overpopulations and uh, until 10000 years before present all the our planet earth was occupied by modern humans okay so mother of uh, human origin is africa only yes yes so, so far yeah we, so far so far we are yes uh, our knowledge is concerned. we have common ancestors and uh, common ancestors lived in africa okay at some point of time in the past right so we we believe in evolution yes so there uh, there is a uh, question it may be silly but so we are from the ancestors like uh, this uh, apes and all that yes so now these apes are also existing yes how it is possible this is a, a question asked by so many politicians and all that yeah so how can you uh, so answer it <coughs> evolution is a continuous process okay and uh, all the species they are keep evolving and uh, in fact humans are also evolving and uh, now the evolution rate is fast okay so human are evolving more faster than what our ancestors have uh, evolved with the rate of and uh, okay yes. nowadays also this evolution is yes, going evolution on yes evolution is going on okay. and uh, faster than the, the the previous evolution okay because the you know selection we have a selection force oh. so if uh, selection force and the natural selection process all depends upon your environment so the environment of modern humans are changing very fast mm -hmm. and we are responding we the human all species respond against the our environmental pressure 
So now the environmental pressure is high and the humans are evolving faster than what we have evolved so far. So is there any uh, distinct ex example uh -huh. for, for the uh, speed evolution of the human? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like uh, for example humans, uh, our common ancestors were uh, uh, no doubt uh, chimpanzees okay. and uh, we got separated from chimpanzees about 5 million years before present and then also like lot of branches were evolved you will see like hundreds of branches mm -hmm. during the course of evolutions but not all the branches survives okay many many branches they get extinct mm -hmm. and then what we are the resultant we are the only one marginal branch we are the resultant of only one branch okay. of this uh, course of evolution that's why the genetic diversity within modern humans is very less despite we are everywhere in the world but we are very less diverse if you compare the diversity scale of modern humans with the chimpanzees chimpanzees are mostly found in africa mm. but they are highly diverse they are diversified than us okay so all the modern humans diversity is lesser than the diversity, diversity of, of chimpanzees. chimpanzees who are restricted to only africa okay and uh, this evolution of course uh, is continuing because like you know like we have different selection places our dietary pattern is different uh, what we consume, uh, Americans and Europeans, they don't eat. So we have two different kind of selection force, two different kind of uh, environment. Okay. We have transformed our diet. Okay. So if you go back to 10,000 years before present, all the humans, they used to eat only one kind of food. Oh. But now... What that, kind of food that is? That was like a, a plant-based product and oh. uh, meats. Meat also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of uh, neolithization neolithic revolution when we started keeping agriculture's product and uh, started putting um, uh, this uh, herds with us okay. then we completely transformed our diet so our diet is not what our ancestors uh, diet was okay so this is another kind of environment that we are giving ourselves okay other thing is that uh, we are in the in the time of uh, uh, industrialization so our muscles are not fit than what our ancestors, like, uh, ancestors used to be and uh, we are physically fit not fit like our ancestors so these are the different different uh, uh, selection of places and then we are evolving in that direction okay so one more question sir so we came from the common honest ancestor yeah uh, and uh, we extended to so many uh, areas of the land, so uh, world. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you see the people of uh, um, uh, nations, mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, so much diversified. Yes. So Americans are um, like that and Chinese are different from the Americans and uh, uh, we are different from the Chinese and Africans are different from um, our yeah. country. So, yeah, so how, <coughs> how does it happen? This, uh, uh, this uh, morphologically, uh, uh, this, uh, this resemblance is the resultant of uh, genetic isolation. Although we are very close to each other genetically and on the scale of uh, chimpanzees, we are less diverse. But again, we have this limited diversity and that limited diversity leads to different kind of morphological features and uh, as well as physiological features. Okay. So the East Asians, they are gen genetically isolated to South Asians for last 10,000, 15,000 years before present. Americans, they are genetically isolated from the South Asians for almost 20,000 years before present. Okay. So this 20,000 years of time gives lot of uh, independent evolution. Mm -hmm. For example, Tibetans, mm. Tibetans they have adopted for high altitude. Okay. So they have different kind of selection pressures and then in evolved in that line. Mm -hmm. So they uh, they adopted for very high altitude, and they have genetic mutations. Okay. Because of so this, they need less oxygen. Yes. Um, the people say. So they have uh, they can survive at that high, high altitude, right. but we can't survive because we don't have that mutation. Okay. So against this selection pressure, we so can we uh, uh, differentiate the DNA of uh, that kind and uh, yes yes uh, yeah yeah huh? yeah. So for example, uh, humans were unable to digest lactose sugar. Okay. until 7000 years before present uh -huh. but now most of the humans can digest lactose 
sugar okay because of this selection uh -huh. when is we started keeping uh, uh, herds with us we started consuming uh, milk, milk because of this uh, requirement of protein okay and uh, scarcity of to overcome the scarcity of uh, nutritious diet okay we started consuming so milk. now we can digest the milk yes now human can digest milk oh. but not east asians uh -huh. east asians and africans they can't digest milk but south asians they can digest oh. europeans can digest milk so very good so this is the advantageous uh, mutations that has turned on the expression of genes mm -hmm. and because of that expression of genes few people they can have lactose uh, 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 intolerance and uh, many of us can be intolerant okay so uh, one more question sir mm. <coughs> so if you find any fossil in the archaeological survey or so so if you can get the dna from that so can you produce the animal which was present in those days yeah so genetically uh, we can uh, if we have animal fossils we can uh, reconstruct the morphological features we can also understand their size we can also understand their uh, uh, their uh, this uh, the beneficial traits okay and if we have at the same time if we have human fossil we can reconstruct their genetic makeup we can see their migration pattern okay. we can understand their dietary pattern okay. so all these uh, physio physiological uh, parameters and their genetic makeup we can definitely reconstruct okay sir if we have dna data dna data yeah so uh, uh, what we can say about the genome mapping and all that yeah so genome mapping is future of our country because you know like south asians we have more than 5000 uh, different population groups we have huge diversity and uh, we are also very uh, endogamous group of individuals okay and that leads to different kind of diseases <laughs> and then uh, india has lot of genetic burdens and okay. in future this genetic burdens will keep on increasing okay so we are at the risk of this genetic burdens genetic uh, diseases and that is a uh, alarming and threatening to our country okay so genome mapping is very much important and so you know, can you give me one or two examples for those diseases <clears throat> there are many 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 diseases and the more than uh, thousands of genes have been already identified okay. that causes lot of diseases for example <clears throat> we have seen that few groups they are highly endogamic like parsis mm -hmm. like uh, vaishya population of uh, andhra pradesh they are also highly endogamic okay and that gives uh, uh, some diseases one disease i will quote here they the vaishya community many of them can't uh, tolerate the anesthesia drug anesthesia drug okay yeah. so that uh, administration of that anesthesia drug can sometime lead to death also okay so we have mapped that gene and that the gene that encodes uh, enzyme that called uh, butyl choline esterase mm -hmm. so we already have found and then we have seen that many many individual individual indian groups they are highly endogamic and they are at the risk of the uh, genetic uh, based diseases okay okay so its genome project is a very essential for us and we have <coughs> to find out some more genes which are causing yes. so we diseases. have yeah we have to sequence not only thousands we have to sequence lakhs of genomes okay to map the exact uh, genes responsible for diseases okay and this is a high time and uh, i think government of india is pushing this project uh -huh. and dbt is already sequencing lot of uh, human genome okay. but that is not enough we have to sequence more and more so we can identify the genes which are responsible mm. for the diseases yeah so after that what can we do to eradicate those these uh, uh, genes and uh, can we replace <clears throat> the genes no we can't replace the gene but yeah uh, but what we can do we can understand the mechanism and then we can design the drugs okay therapeutic therapeutic drugs that can target that gene okay. and that drug can express over express or down regulate the gene okay so that can be useful if you oh. can trace the gene okay yeah. uh, what about the genetic engineering we are hearing Uh, so genetic so engineering much, uh, is a very novel tool and that is uh, uh, very useful for like gene therapy okay and uh, in future like uh, this era is going to come but uh, this gene therapy based uh, therapeuticals has not been market okay it requires lot of uh, testings and uh, approvals and that need to be validated also okay 
because you know it's a matter of uh, this uh, human health okay okay and uh, this is not very easy and uh, very uh, and germane also okay. to use this uh, gene therapy but in future definitely this time will come okay sir so thank you very much uh, for coming all the way from thank, lucknow thanks to a lot. here thanks uh, how do you feel about kamam kamam is always uh, uh, very uh, uh, this uh, fascinating for me and basically i like the hospitality of this college and people are very good and i like the landscape mostly the dolmens and this uh, prehistorical settlement okay the richness is very much higher uh-huh. and this uh, the evidences what we are finding in this area is uh, uh, very much uh, protected and preserved so we have a lot of possibilities in future to work and explore more in this region okay so thank you thanks very much, so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks. from from our